the biblical truth of our hymns. This, as far as I see, will be the 72nd hymn we've done so far. Come a long way. We've got a long way to go, Lord willing. Today, a new name in glory. What a marvelous hymn this one is. So let me find the information about it. Now, this is a story. I don't know if this is the actual story of the writer or an illustration, but let me go ahead. A story is told about a young man who did some work in a consultant firm, one of the wealthiest businessmen in town. As a result, he was told that he would be invited to a great grand party that the businessmen were holding in the expensive restaurant on the top floor of the tallest building in town. The young man was thrilled because he never expected to be able to enjoy this event and elegance. He and his wife prepared to attend and waited for this once-a-lifetime experience. When that night arrived, they took the elevator to the top floor. But when they were entered in, they were stopped at the door because the doorkeeper could not find their names written in the guest book. As it turns out, he had failed to respond to the RSVP. And because their name was not found in the book, he and his wife were turned away. Romans 20, verse 15, And whosoever was not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast in the lake of fire. Saddening, there would be people to be turned away from the gates of heaven because they never accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. Their names were not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Charles Austin My Miles, 1868 to 1946, also the writer of In the Garden, a wonderful great hymn, wrote the words to this, to this song this week. In 1910. He was a pharmacist until he left out of that career and was a senior editor of the Hall Mac Publishing Company where he worked for 37 years. And it said he's wrote at least 398 songs and the music at least eight more. His best known like I said was In the Garden. And this one we're singing today, A New Name and Glory. And let's go ahead. Mr. Miles writes this hymn. Whether that story I, I read to you was an illustration or true, he writes his hymn first person he himself pronoun. And I've said before, when we come to a lot of these hymns, they were written down in the field of Mr. Miles would be assumed that he wrote this to publish it. But many of the hymns are written down as a personal testimony of their lives. Some of the hymns we sing, you know, I love to tell the story. Many who sing that hymn don't look, tell the story at all. And we gotta look into the count, not just okay. Take your Bibles. I mean, take your hymnals to page one hundred and let's sing. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And we ought to do more than just take a hymnal two hundred thirty-seven to sing. We ought to have what is this hymn about, and who is the writer? And when we look at Fanny Crosby, to look at a woman who's written such great, she didn't write music. She wrote poems, and people later on would put those poems to music and many of her poems were changed and altered and we got to realize but a woman who was blinded by a fraudulent doctor so i've read look at the glory of every single hymn she writes about i will see jesus i will see the lord a woman that you do you will see not bitter and here we have i was once a sinner no more a sinner. Well, how did he not become a sinner? But I came pardoned. Now, when we look at the word pardon, we got to look at an aspect of the word pardon. I've done jail ministry many years, over eight years. 
And I had to explain to those men that the warden could come into the jail room cell pod and he could have a stack of pardon papers ready. You know, put your name down here. It's been signed by the governor of the state and the president of the United States and everybody involved. The papers are signed. All I got to do is fill in the name. And I walk into the cell and say, okay, who in this cell is guilty? And if no one raises their hand, the warden can walk out of that room and shut that door and give no pardon to anybody. And don't tell me, Stolly, you're crazy because I've been in jail ministry. I have, with the people there, and I've asked, well, who in this room is guilty? And I have not seen, I have had times where I have not seen one hand go up. And I'm going with the message I'm going up. You don't get a pardon. A pardon is obtainable by someone who is guilty. When a prisoner walks up to the warden and says, Warden, I am guilty of this crime, and not only that crime, but I'm guilty of other crimes. Then you can get a pardon. So Mr. Miles is writing, I was a sinner. What was the result as, was met in, as I'm a sinner? I got a pardon. April 21st, 1987, I told Jesus who I was. I was a sinner. I was going to hell. I got a pardon. 2020, when I sin, I confess my sin to, to God and to Jesus through the blood. I tell God and Jesus I am guilty. I get a pardon. A pardon, what? To receive from my Lord, capital L. You can get a pardon from a governor. You can get pardon from a warden. You can get pardon from a, a priest or a pastor. And that, but it ain't going to do you no good. There are people throughout the history of the world going all the way back to Adam and Eve. They have received pardons and they have died and gone to hell. This was freely given. The pardon that the Lord Jesus Christ gives and the pardon that God will receive by Jesus Christ is absolutely free and it costs us nothing. It costs the life and death and brutality treated to Jesus Christ. For me, it was free. It was freely given and I found. I, I would think that Mr. Miles found grace, found mercy, found love, found salvation. But what did he else see find? That he kept, that he always kept. Now he kept. Always kept his word. And what's my word? I'll never leave thee or forsake thee. You are a child of God. I adopted you, the Bible says. And with adoption, you, an illegal adopt, adoption in some states, like the state of Connecticut, you cannot undo an adoption. Now, you can undo and you can disown a, a, a birth child. You can give birth to a, let's say, a daughter and say, okay, that's it. I'm done. I'm finished with you. You're gone. Get out. I just... But if you adopted a daughter and those laws of the state of Connecticut and others, you can't. And there are some states and countries where the adopted child on your will, your last will and testament, some state, it has to be there. That child has to be there. Some areas of the world, that child has to be first. Now, I know somebody who wrote written a will, and when that will was written by a lawyer, there were two people that were exception from that rule that from that will that I don't want them in my will, and you can do that. But you can't do that with adoption. And God adopted us into glory. So he says, I was a sinner. I've got pardon. It was from the Lord. It was free. And it's of the word of God. And God keeps his word. I may not be able to keep my word. I got to say, Lord willing, if the Lord may. If I say something, well, I'll see you Friday at 2 p.m. I don't know what's going to happen between when I said that and 2 p.m. Friday. I think it was George Washington or somebody in American history. I heard the story. 
he told someone, I'll be there Friday through whatever it was. He got on his horse and went all the way back to that guy. And told that guy, he said, I was mistaken. I, I, whatever. I can't be there in that day and time. You don't know what's going to happen. I was humbly kneeling. Now, I've witnessed the men in prison again, and we didn't get on our knees. I witnessed to my father-in-law in the church, and we got down on our knees. And it's not essential you were on your knees. The thief on the cross was not on his knees. But humbly bowing, it, it did your heart humble. If you say, I have no sin and I am good, you're not humble. Humble is when your heart breaks. Humble is when you realize who you really are. And what Jesus Christ really did that should have been done to me. The Bible says that Jesus went into hell. I ought to be the one who goes to hell. And I remember, the, I remember parts of the day I got saved. I didn't confess any of my sins to the man that was there that guided me to the Lord. I, 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 we had silence. And in that time, I was telling God some of the sins that I do recall at that time. It would take someone humbly to come out and confess that they're a sinner. That's why when we're in any public ministry, we like to deal with somebody. Want to? We don't. I don't like to deal with somebody who has a friend or a group of people. I want to deal with them singly. Because many times, pride and boasting. Now, now they may. I'm not saying they're not going to, but they may not humbly before their friends. I mean, I oh, make myself look bad. I was humbly kneeling at the cross. You mean he didn't climb no mountain? He didn't go to a building? He didn't make a pilgrimage? Wasn't the altar? No, it was the cross. Like I said, I witnessed to my father-in-law at the altar of a church. But it wasn't the altar that he was pleading to. It was the cross. Too many Baptists think, oh, the altar, the altar, the altar. It's the cross. My altar was a coffee table. Men at the prison, their altar was one a folding table. I would assume with great things like uh, Billy Graham and all that, I would assume some people's altars were a couch, a television, a, a, a lazy boy chair. or I've known of great preachers out in Greens of Connecticut, you know, in, in the center of town, and, and maybe their altar was the grass, their altar was a rock, their altar was a tree, their altar was nothing. But it all comes down to the bare essential, whether you're kneeling, standing, uh, sitting, or whatever position, lying down. You can be lying down and, and unable to get out of a hospital bed, and you can still come to the cross and be saved. At the cross. Fearing not, no fear at all, but God's angry frown. Now that's humbling. And if you are dealing with somebody and they have friends, they are friends. And they don't care. But God is angry with me. God is going to put his wrath on me because I don't have the son. If you just step off for a side for a minute, I'm going to get things right with God. And that's what Mr. Mills is saying. 
I don't care about my status. I don't care about what you're going to think of me. I don't care about, but I do care about God's angry with me. I've got the wrath of God on me. And I want to get clean. I want to get clear. I want to tell God who I am. I want to come humbly. I want that pardon. I want to come forth. I mean, there are people in churches who got saved. And they didn't walk the aisle. They didn't come to the altar because they were afraid what people would think. But right there in the pew, they sat and we, or knelt. And receive or stood and received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. But, okay, whether they were, okay, I don't want people to see me get up. They were still angry that God is angry with them and they wanted to get things right. I'm angry at who I am. That God is angry with me. And maybe I don't want to walk. I don't want people to say, I don't want people to see I'm doing it. I'll just do it. And that's okay. Hey, listen. If you come as a sinner and you, you are the sinner and you receive God's pardon wherever you're at, and maybe you do have a little fear, that's okay. Did you get that pardon? I Again, with the prison ministry, I had many, many, many years and this was back in Connecticut. And I think I, I was, yeah, I was already, in, I was already moving. I was already living in Florida. And I had, I was talking to a Christian woman I knew, a great friend in the Lord. And we're just talking one day. And she says, you know, and she started talking about her brother. I'm like, okay. And how wonderful he was doing and how marvelous he, he's done since he got saved. So when you were preaching, Stolly, at the prison. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Hold on. What? And evidently, her brother was there in one of my messages, and he received Christ as his Savior. There was nobody that got out. Nobody came forward. No one had publicly addressed and came to me and received Christ as their Savior. Oh, but somebody sitting in one of those folding chairs... Listening to a Bible uh, study that I was giving, humbly sat in a chair and got saved and changed his life. He received the pardon. He saw the angry frown of God upon his soul and he asked Jesus Christ to save his soul and he got saved. And as many men that get saved and will get saved, there is that many stuff. You can't say, oh, everybody needs to get saved at a coffee table. That ain't going to happen. Everybody needs to go to a church altar. That ain't going to happen. You need to be at a pew. You need to be. Everybody has their own personal testimony of salvation. Well, I got saved by, you know, a man with an open Bible. I got saved by a cassette tape. I got saved, you know, it's all over. When the heavens, there are three heavens, open, and I saw, now this is not literal, that my name was written down. I learned later on, much, much later on, through reading and studying the Bible, that there was a book called the Lamb's Book of Life. Oh, okay, interesting. Go through reading my Bible, studying my Bible, reading my studying my Bible. Oh, there are people in Revelation twenty that if their name's not in that book, they're they're going to the Lake of Fire. Okay, reading, studying, reading. Study. Oh, wait a minute, my name is in that book. I'm not going to the, to the Great White Throne Judgment, but my name is in that book. I've got reservations written down. In glory. Listen, if you go somewhere and you get a hotel, motel, bread and breakfast <coughs> in someone's room, and you walk up to the desk, the front, whatever it is, 
They're going to say name, like I told you that story. And they're going to go in the book or they're going to go in the computer. They're going to go into some kind of fun. They're going to say, oh, okay, we have your name. Here's the keys and here's your room number. Hope you enjoy your stay. Or they're going to say, well, we don't see your name like that story. Uh, we don't have room for you. Mr. Miles and, and Mr. Hayward found out that in glory, there's, there's a book. And in that book, there are names. And in, the, in that book of the name, they are reservations into glory, heaven. And my name is on that list. Now, if God may erase my sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 John 1, 9. But the Bible says he's never going to erase my name out of that book. My sins get erased. But not the name. And that book is in heaven. I saw that my name was written down. Now there are, there are two schools or classes on this team. Some people teach that the names are already there from the foundation of the world. Possible. Some people believe that their names are written the day they get saved. Possible. Which is correct. Either or. <laughs> There's no, oh, you're going to go to hell if you believe that the names are written down when you're saved. Or you're going to go to hell if you believe the names. No, either or. But this hymn, I was in a church one time. And when someone did get saved or proclaimed they got saved, we would open up this hymn and we would sing this hymn to them. And we would spell out to the new convert, the new person just newly born again. This hymn is a wonderful hymn. This is just what happened. Get them going. Get them started on their path of growing in the Lord. You say, what do you believe about the name? I believe my name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. Permanent. Okay. And if I die before the rapture, I go to glory. After from the body and presence with the Lord. And when I start hearing the angels rejoice, Luke chapter 16, and I find out someone on this earth has gotten saved, I will look over and I will see if, if the Lord God or God himself or Lord Jesus, I see if, if they'll write the name in the book. And if I see them write the name in the book, then I know at that point they got saved, their name's in the book. But I do know one thing, and we're going to come up with this in a moment. The angels do know that when somebody gets saved, Luke 16, and they do rejoice when that one lost sheep comes back to the fold. I do know that. That's scripture. In the book, the Bible, it is written, saved by grace. Romans, Romans chapter 3, chapter 4. Not a word, at least any man boasts. Ephesians. Oh, the joy that came to my soul. The day I got saved, I don't remember, I think it was a couple days after that. I was so excited that I had received Christ. And I felt, you know, not whoopee, uh, I felt a marvelously cleanse i felt like a wash that i'd never been washed before and i remember i was in the shower taking a shower and I realized that i had been cleansed more than i have ever cleansed myself of all the baths and showers i've ever had i was remarkably clean in the eyes of god and since I've been saved, I have such great joy, such great, wonderful gladness. Like God giving me Saturday and God giving me Sunday. With the Daytona 500 minutes, oh man, great joy. Oh, the joy that came to my soul. I am saved. I am not going to hell. 
This is a joy that comes frequently in my my walk with the Lord's salvation. This is the, out of life's trouble, out of life's problems, out of all the complications of all life. And just to realize, you know what? I'm going to heaven. <laughs> You know, people say, I just had, I think it was this weekend, or, uh, oh, hell is here. No, it's not. But when I think of salvation, I think of the glorious that God's going to give me new Jerusalem and this brand new, and I think of this earth and this world, I think that hell with the earth and the world. And some people, oh, how, and I ain't talking about lost souls, man. I go out and try to win lost souls. I'm talking about the riches, the, the material, the, the the junk of this world, the hell with it. Because the Bible says, Peter tells us that the heavens and earth are going to melt with a fervent heat. And death and hell are going to cast up the dead there and them. The, the stuff, everything is going to burn up, inferno. But you know what? I'm not going to burn up. Heaven and earth are going to just phew, burn. But I ain't going to burn. I am never going to hear God tell me, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. Now, if I have an iniquity, if I have sin that has been unconfessed, that's on my books, it's going to be wood, hay, or stubble, and those will be burned, but not me. And that ought to bring joy. And it does for me. Now I am forgiven. And what does forgiven mean? I'm never going to bear that sin. Christ bore that sin. I'm going to glory. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to be with Jesus forever. How? Because of Jesus, because of the cross, because of the gospel, that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day. That's how. Now I am forgiven and I know. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I had two people I was dealing with this weekend and I know. And I'm like, you know? I know. One of them could be. Okay, you know. Another one, I don't know. I know. But why won't you take this 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 literature I'm trying to get you just to make sure you know? They want to interrupt their racing plans, I guess. I don't know. By the blood. Not by the water, not by membership, not by works. I am made whole. And there are people out there, and I've I dealt with them, my friends who dealt with them. They absolutely believe that they are so wicked and so vile that God can't save them. Whatever they had done, whatever they had did, whatever they are doing, the devil has got them believing the lie that they can't be forgiven. And yet you can be made whole. It can be erased. From your records, it can be erased from God's mind through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What sins are you talking about? Here it is. There's a new name written down in glory. Like I said, there was a church we had that when someone got saved, there's a new name written down in glory. Whether you believe the name's there already or the name is written at that time, there's a new name. A new birth comes with that new name. And Jesus said, you must be born again. A man that goes to hell has no name, loses complete identity, what the Bible says. I have a new name written down where? In glory. The hotel? Great hotel chain? Nope. In glory. I got my name written down that I can go to my famous sport event? Nope. In glory. My name is next day. When the next table at this fancy restaurant, it, it clears out, they're going to call me and my party? No. In glory. You mean my name written down, this big fancy? No. A new name written down in glory. I think that G should be capitalized. 
I, I, I may be wrong, but I, I capitalize words like that because glory means heaven. I capitalize the blood of the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, not to do that. Listen, Acts 20, 28 says that blood is God's blood. If that blood is, is God's blood, then that blood is holy. Sinless perfection, right? I could be wrong. You know? When I get to heaven, the English teachers of glory will yell at me. They'll yell at me, okay? Wood hair stubble. There's a new written there's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. <laughs> April 21st, 1987, my name was written down. How's that? How about the fact that, let's say, uh, how do I say this? Let's say a mother's in heaven. All right. She, she's saved. She, she died. She's going off the glory. And Luke chapter 16 says the angels rejoice when a sinner repents and gets right. And that soul is in glory, absent from the body, present with the Lord. And there's rejoicing in heaven. There's a name in heaven saved, whether it's written down or it's already there, however it is. But let's go by the hint. Let's go by this hint. The name's written down in glory. That mother peers over and sees that name. What if that name's her little boy? What if that name is her granddaughter she's been praying for? A daughter-in-law, a sister, a brother, her own mother and father. What if when we get the glory, the Lord tarry, and we hear the angels rejoice and we rejoice and we look down and see that name? What if in some way we? What if I get the glory and I see God is writing my dad's name down? It's not written there today, I don't believe. That's going to have a hoopla. It's going to have an importance. I mean, it's not going to have the importance of some man or maybe in China named Chin Wang Han. Okay, yeah. Or Bruce Miller of, of, of Germany. Or Eric Smith of the United States. Okay. But what if that name is your name? And if I'm talking to born again Christians that are saved in the blood of the Lord Jesus, what about when your name was put in that book? Or the day you got saved, however you believe, that name gets in the book. It's an important, isn't it? You know, we read numbers and we read uh, Chronicles. Oh, boy. Names after names after. Oh, Lord. God, couldn't you name them? Um, Harry, Fred, Jones. Yeah, but some of those names we get sleepy at are the names that are in the line of Jesus Christ. I had one preacher tell me, I, I, it could be, it may not be. What if we were to translate those names that are in the Bible that we think is so boring? My name is Styley. S T Y O Y. Okay. And as far as I know, and I've done a search, as far as I know, there's only, I have to think of one. there's three stylies, as far as I know. My grandpa, which I don't know much about salvation for him. My uncle, I don't know much about salvation for him. And me. I've done the search of styly and it looks like there's another language that speaks S D Y L I, but let's say there's three of them. How important is in the Lands Book of Life if there are three stylies in the Bible and three stylies in the Lands Book of Life? How important is there if there's only two? And one's missing. How important is it there if there's just one and two are missing? How important if your name is not in the Lands Book of Life? 
Remember the story I told you? Remember I told you about the hotel? You go in there, hi, my name is. We don't have you listed. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. We can't let you in. We don't have no room for you. And do you realize, maybe now you start the Bible and you do, have you ever thought about the day you got saved? There are angels rejoicing in heaven. When a mother dies and goes off to glory, and then the angels rejoice a week afterwards that a child of hers has gotten saved. Look over, see the book, see the name. What if that, that preacher is correct that in the Bible, those boring names that we read, what if one of those places in that Bible Is your name you've been read if you read let's say you read the Bible always you read you you do good you read the Bible once a year I do at least once a year what if you read over your name that's what what if the, this is, I was gonna use the hymn though my Bible's over here okay right, here's my street Bible here's my street Bible it's King James 1611 Bible Genesis of Revelation. I, I read this at least once a year. I read it with my family once a year at least. And I study about twice a year. I read this. I read this through. What if I'm reading through the? What if I'm reading through this right? I get to the Revelation. What if I read my name? I have been reading my name. What if by chance I get the judgment seat of Christ and? Revelation says they search for the for the land's book. But let's say we get the revelation. I mean, let's say, let's say we get to the, ju the judgment seat of Christ for only those that are saved. And the Lord, to confirm you, opens up the page. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. It means the Bible is in heaven. And he opens up to a particular passage that you read through and and the Lord Jesus with those holy hands, holy, holy hands. They're holy and righteous and they got marred. He goes down here and he says, see that? Yeah. What is that, Lord? Every time you read that, that's where you were. Chapter and verse. I, I can't, I'm not going to say that's, but you can take this and throw it in the garbage can if you want to. This is not a biblical teaching. But what if it's so? And I said, as far as I know, there are three styles. I don't know about my grandpa and I don't know about my uncle. I never met him. I, my grandpa died uh, in the 70s. I was real young. I remember the day he died. I remember the tears. I remember him in a wheelchair and the other thing, but it's... What if I'm reading, I'm reading through my Bible and there's a word that appears only three times in the, in the Bible? Only three times. I don't know where they are. And if I'm standing there with my grandpa and my uncle, and the Lord opens up for us, see that place? That's where you, where you are. Open the pages. That's where you are. See that page? That's where you are. What if only one of only two of us then? One's out. That's where you are. That's where you are. What about the other stuff? I don't know. I, remember I said the lost man that goes to hell has no more name. He's not in here. Frightening by chance. Let's say I'm the only styly that's, that's in the land's book of life. Lord opens up the word. The styly, there you are. How many times did you read that style? I got the end of my, my reading study Bible. I got... That Bible I got right there is marked since 2000. And I've read the Bible long before 2000. But that Bible was marked every year since 2000. I've read it at least once. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. What if our name, your name, you take your name. Let's take you don't read the Bible. 
What if you're missing your, and like I said, this tension, you can throw it in the garbage. This is not biblical sound teaching. This is a possibility. I'm not going to go to hell, but I'm saying this, and I'm not going to go to hell, and you know, you're not going to go to hell. I'm saying that you, you have to believe it. No. You can say I'm a fool. You can say I'm stupid. You can say I'm crazy. I may be. And may the Lord will. Maybe what I'm saying right now would be wood, hay, or stone. But what if? And if our name is in the Bible, okay, if it's there, then it's already written down with the free foundation of the world. That settles it. You imagine a loved one in heaven? He just got saved. Now, Lord, there's a Lance Book of Life. There's. Where is his name? Let's open it up. Here's the book, chapter. I don't know. I don't know the book names and chapter and verses in heaven, but there he is. You know what people who change the Bible do? Let's go to Revelation. This Bible, I got this Bible is hard to find. Things. If you change the Word of God, I am one of them people. I'm going to say, if you change the Word of God, I don't believe you're saved. Put me on a rod, put me, you know, on, on faggots to burn, put me in, in a devil's hell. I believe if you have the iniquity to change the word of God. Let's just look at this here. Revelation 22. Oh, where is it? Revelation 22. Is it 22? Okay. Revelation 22, verse 19. This is not my study Bible. That's why. 22, 19. Don't get used to one Bible. Because when you get used to one Bible, you know, it's on this right side of the page, halfway through the column, and you're given another Bible, you just go into blank like I just did now. And if any man shall, any man, save the lost, any man shall take away the word from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life and out of the holy city. What if the Bible that people correct what if when they changed the Bible, they had removed their name? Revelation 22, 19. And they're standing at the great white throne judgment. Open up the book. Where's their name? I don't see it, Lord. And they, whoa, whoa, let me see. Okay. Give me their Bible. Lord, they had the NIV. Okay. Give me the NIV. See? It's missing. You cut it. You cut your own name out of the book. Of, if this is the book, if this is the Bland's Book of Life, when you edited the Bible, you cut your name out. Oh, that's something interesting, isn't it? It's my name. Oh yes, it's my name. And the white robe angels sing the story. They're saying the story. Luke chapter 16. A sinner has come home. I found the sheep. Put it on his shoulders. Bring him home. I found the lost coin. Here it is. My son has come home from the pigsty. For there's a new reign. Uh, what was that? There's a new name written down in glory. And it's Stiley Hayward. They don't say that. We used to sing the guy's name or the woman's name that got saved. Say, the man, here's his man. He, he professes Christ as his Savior. His name is such and such. Everything. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's Joseph Soap, or whatever his name is. Make it personal. When's the last time this hymn was sung in your church? Wouldn't it be a great idea when someone says, hey, listen, hey, this man just 
this is over here uh, at the invitation just got saved. He he is saved now. He's glory. Everyone, open up your hands to a new name and glory. And when we come to the chorus, which we'll sing three times because there's three stanzas, when it says, It is mine, you say, It is Joseph So, or whatever the guy's name is. Oh, yes, it's mine. Satan will come to you. Oh, you really think, Yes, it's my name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Oh, yes, it's mine. Claim it. You know that name it, claim it. If you are saved and you know it, it is your name in heaven. It is your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Name it, claim that. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven. Here I go. Never more to roam. I remember I first heard that song. <laughs> I came out of Roman Catholic Church. I was thinking that it was Rome, as in Roman Catholic. That'd be good. You know, get a Catholic saved. Say, no more to Rome. Get out, get out from the Vatican. Get out from the Pope. No more to Rome. There's no more wandering around, though some Christians do. But when you put your name in glory, you are going to glory. You are going to heaven. You may flutter, but... Whether you're a worldly Christian or you're a serious Christian, you're going to glory. If you are washed in the blood, you have received that pardon. You are signed, sealed, secured, going. There it is. Glory to God.